بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلنا الى ذكر يعني صفه الحج نعم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله We've got to the stage whereby we're explaining the description of the Hajj, the description of the Hajj. قبل أن يصل إلى الميقات يصح له أن يتجهز من بيته إذا كانت المسافة قريبة يعني يعني يغتسل ويلبس الإزار والرداء وخاصة ممن يعني يسافر عبر الطائرة الآن أو يكون مثلا في في المدينة فله أن يتجهز من الفندق. وعندما يأتي الميقات يلبي نعم. The person who, ten, who intends to make Hajj <coughs> before he goes to the Miqat then it's allowed for him to start preparing for Hajj in terms of cleaning himself, having a, a bathing himself, changing his clothes, perfuming himself. So a person can do this in his hotel for example if he's in Medina and especially if somebody is coming by plane or from far away, then from home or from the airport, they can change themselves. They can prepare themselves for the Hajj. لكن يعني لابد أن ينبه من معه أن الإحرام لا يكون إلا عند الميقات ولا يصح أن يحرم قبل الميقات. نعم. But it's important to know, and he should also tell the people around him that as for the Ihram, and we said yet, we said earlier on that the meaning of Ihram is the niyyah, the intention to assume your Ihram. Then this has to be done at Miqat and it shouldn't be done before Miqat. يسن عند الإحرام الاغتسال. So when a person is putting his ihram on, then it's recommended for the person to make a ghusl. وقد تقدم معنا صفة الاغتسال. And we've already studied previously how a person should make a ghusl. والتطيب في بدنه لا في ثوبه يعني لا يمكن أن يضع شيء من الطيب على الإزار والرداء على الإحرام. And also a person should, it's recommended for a person to use perfume. However, this perfume the person places on his body and not on his ihram, i.e. not on the garments. أما بالنسبة لتقليم الأظافر قبل الإحرام وكذلك حلق العانة ونتف الإبط هذا إن احتاج إلى قص هذه الأشياء قصها وإلا فليست من السنة أن تؤخذ عند الإحرام. نعم. And as for a person clipping his nails, shaving his pubic hair and so on. If a person is in need of doing this, then he can do this. And if a person isn't in need of doing this, then it's not a specific sunnah for the ihram. If he was in the habit that he would pray for two prayers, for the prayer of the prayer, then he would pray for two prayers and then he would pray for two prayers. يعني أي يدخل في النسك يعني نية الدخول في النسك والنية قلنا محلها القلب والتلفظ بها بدعة في كل العبادات حتى في الحج والعمرة نعم And once a person has made his ghusl if it's from a person's normal practice that he prays two rak'at after making wudu then he can pray two rak'at after making wudu So this isn't two rak'at of putting on an ihram because there's no uh, prayer for putting on the ihram This is two rak'at for making wudu after a person has um, prayed these two, two rak'at, then he assumes the state of ihram. And we said previously that this means that the person makes the niyyah, the intention to enter into ihram. And we said that the niyyah, the intention is done in the heart and not upon the tongue. And this is the same as in all of the acts of worship. In the prayer, even in Hajj and Umrah, the niyyah is, uh, is done in the heart and not said upon the tongue. نعم آه كذلك له أن, أن أدركته الصلاة مثلا عند الميقات أن يصلي ثم يكون نية الدخول في الأسك بعد الصلاة التي يعني أدركت في الميقات نعم And similarly if there's a, there's a prayer that's come then he prays the prayer and then after this he says the niyyah for entering into the state of ihram وتقدم معنا أن يصلي ركعتين عند ميقات ذو الحليفة وهذا خاص بهذا الميقات لبركة المكان. نعم. And also we mentioned that a person can pray two rak'at for being in ذو الحليفة because ذو الحليفة is a blessed place as the Prophet ﷺ said. And these two rak'at 
are only in this miqat and no other miqat. يلبس الإزار والرداء. And a person he wears the upper garment and the lower garment. والأولى أن تكون ذات اللون الأبيض. And it's better for both of them to be white. ثم بعد هذا يذكر الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله تعالى أنه يلبي والأفضل أنه يلبي إذا ركب في السيارة أو في الحافلة مثلا. نعم. الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله he mentions that after doing this then a person starts saying the talbiya and it's better and more appropriate for a person to say the talbiya after getting onto his mode of transport. نعم. التلبية شيء ونية الدخول في النسك شيء آخر. نعم. So the intention of a person for entering into the state of ihram that's one that's a separate thing and a person saying the talbiya out loud that's a separate thing these are two different things yeah. so a person should say whilst he's saying the talbiya labbayk allahumma labbayk labbayk la sharika laka labbayk inna alhamda wal ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak yani don an yaj'al fiha shay' min al lahn aw ma ila hadha na'am so without a person trying to sing this or say it in a, uh, a particular way this is the talbiya that person should be saying والاصل ان كل واحد يلبي على حده يعني هذا الذي نرى من التلبيه التلبيه الجماعيه هذا ليس من سنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم او ان واحد يلبي ثم يردد خلفه مجموعه من الناس هذا لم يرد عن النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام والصحابه رضوان الله عليهم نعم the base ruling with regards to a person saying the talbiya is that each in each individual makes their own talbiya each individual individually says the talbiya as for what we say nowadays see nowadays groups of people making the talbiya together or a person making the talbiya and everybody else then following him and repeating him then this isn't from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lakin in wafaqat talbiya hadha talbiya ahad al-nas hadha la ishkal fi in wafaqat dun qasm la ishkal naam and if, out of coincidence, the talbiya of this person coincidentally joins the talbiya of this person, they end up saying it together without an intention, then there's no problem in this. يذكر شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى أن التلبية تكون عندما ينطلق يعني مثلا توقفت السيارة وبدأت تمشي يلبي توقف في مكان ثم أخذ يمشي هكذا يلبي عندما يقبل على مكة نعم شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله mentions that the talbiya is said when the mode of transport, whether it's a coach or a car or a camel, it starts to move and it's moving. So if you're going towards Mecca, when it's moving, you start saying the talbiya. If it stops for a while, then you stop. And then when it moves again, then you start saying the talbiya again. And a person should raise his voice when saying the talbiya. وتذكر بهذا أنه مجيب لنداء الله سبحانه وتعالى وأذن في الناس بالحج أتوك رجالا نعم and a person should be feeling whilst he's saying the tarbiya that he's now answering the call of Allah wherein Allah said that uh, go uh, proclaim the hajj amongst the people and they will come to you on foot وهي على ما ذكر جابر جابر رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لبى بالتوحيد يعني هذا هو معنى لا إله إلا الله نعم أن جابر رضي الله عنه he mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was saying the talbiya this is the talbiya of tawheed this is the statement of tawheed فإذا نوى الدخول في النسك حرم عليه كل شيء من محضرات الإحرام التي تقدمت معنا نعم as soon as a person assumes the state of ihram then all those things which we previously which we previously mentioned that a person cannot do then all these things now become impermissible له أن يغتسل but it's allowed for him to make a ghusl to have a shower even after ihram a person can have a ghusl a person can use soap and shampoo but a person should try to stay away from those soaps and shampoos that have a very strong perfume and if he wants to change this ihram that he's wearing he can change it and put on another ihram. له كذلك أن يتغطى بمثلا بغطاء وكذا لا إشكال في هذا. نعم. And also, if a person wants to then cover himself with another garment, let's say مثلا بطانية. نعم. For example, let's say a blanket because it's cold, then he can do this. نعم. يظل على هذا على التلبية 
والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم است... آه... التزم هذه التلبية ولم يزد عليها شيئا نعم and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this talbiya which we heard earlier on he used to say only this and he never used to increase on this وأقرب بعض الصحابة عندما يعني ذكروا أنواع غير تلبية عليه الصلاة والسلام and also some of the companions they mentioned some form of talbiya which is other than the talbiya of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم 